Hello and welcome to another Reaper Block tutorial. Reaper 5.70 is now out. And in this video, we'll be looking at changes to the tempo envelope, to regions, to the ruler, to effects and automation. We're going to start off with looking at the ruler, the regions and tempo changes. There's a lot of improvements here and a lot more flexibility with what we can do with it. So if we just have a look at the regions here, you can see it goes from one, nine, three, eight, five, six, and it's not really clear where, like how long a region actually is. Like this number eight, does that go from bar 50 to 58? Or does that go from bar 50 to, I don't know, uh, 82? Uh, you can't really tell unless you drag it. What's changed here in version 5.70 is that we can expand the ruler height so we can see multiple regions in lanes or multiple markers in lanes. Just drag this down and see those markers that were overlapping and the regions that were overlapping are now separated into different lanes. So now it's a lot clearer if we grab region four and drag it over what's going to happen. Or we can uh, make a copy of region number eight over here and we can see that five regions are copied at the same time because of that, of that longer overlapping region. And if we zoom in here on the markers, we can see what actually happens when the markers are overlapping. So if they're not overlapping and the name is short, then uh, they will stay on the same lane. But once you start to overlap them, they will pop down to a different lane, which is great. When you're working with projects with a lot of regions and a lot of markers, this is going to be really, really helpful. You may notice that tempo markers are also different. Right here, it's 124. In the previous versions of Reaper, tempo changes looked more like markers in the timeline. It's now just this little square. You can still drag that to change where that tempo change occurs. You can also double click it to edit it. You can right click it to edit or remove. So I've got this one at 124. Let's go at uh, 158 and put in a new tempo change. It's a tempo marker. So I'm going to change this to 120. That is now that we have two tempo markers, we can actually adjust both of them at the same time. So if I click this one and hold down Command Option on the Mac or Control Option on PC. We can drag this and it's changing both tempo markers at the same time. So this previous marker is getting faster. This one is getting slower as I change that tempo. So let's look at the ruler layout. This is a new menu option. When you right click in the ruler, you can display regions in lanes. So disabling this will collapse these uh, regions. We also have that option for markers. And then different options for displaying tempo changes, displaying the time signature changes, or both in separate lanes. And once again, to collapse this, we can just drag the main toolbar handle just, just above the TCP, and we can expand or contract that uh, ruler height. There's also a preference for this. It's in Preferences, Editing Behavior, Mouse, and allows resizing ruler by dragging bottom edge. So click Apply, and now there's a handle that we can drag anywhere. So that's off by default, but it's up to you whether you want to uh, do that or not. Something else that's new with the rulers and the regions and everything, we can now disable the lines in the Arrange view for regions, markers, and time signature changes. So. This is by default, they're enabled. There's a marker here, there's a green line going down. There's a region here, there's a gray line going down. And that goes through the entire arrange view across every track. So now we can disable that, click OK. Those region and marker lines are not going to be visible over the items or through the items, but they will still work as a, a snap point. You can see here, it still snaps as long as you have snap enabled in the main toolbar. You don't have to have grid lines enabled on the, in the main toolbar. 
markers will still be able to act as uh, snap points. We can now edit two edges of regions at the same time, changing their length. One gets shorter, one gets longer. Uh, just hover your mouse over in the area between the two regions and uh, the cursor will change, allowing this dual edge editing. There's now new mouse modifier options uh, in the project marker region lane and project regions. If you ever wanted to do some customization there, now you can. All right, so one more thing with tempo editing. Let's make sure that the tempo envelope is visible. So click on the automation enable button, tempo map visible. You can also go to view menu and tempo envelope. And we now have this option of uh, drawing in tempo changes. And if you're going to be drawing in tempo changes where you have items in your project already, you might want to go to the project settings and make sure this is on uh, time base for items, envelopes, markers set to beats. And that way, like your, your markers and your regions are going to adjust uh, their position to match these new tempo changes. But in general, you're going to be writing tempo changes before you're recording. Uh, that tends to work the best. So what we're going to be doing here to freehand draw a uh, tempo change is command on the Mac or control on PC. And these changes are going to be snapped to, uh, I think it's quarter notes. Changes are going to be snapped to quarter notes. Um, but yeah, you can now um, draw in tempo changes instead of um, kind of adding them in one, one by one or adding in a, a linear envelope uh, to change gradually. So that's a pretty cool change. And here's how that would sound, changing the tempo on these quarter notes over a couple bars. So that's another great feature. Uh, if you're doing complex tempo maps, it's going to be a lot easier to draw it in with a mouse now. Another change to automation items is always removing the underlying uh, envelope data uh, when creating an automation item. So in other words, if I have some freehand volume automation here, and then I draw in a automation item on this envelope, these points now belong to the automation item. And if I move this out of the way, those points are not there. So previous versions, uh, you drag that out and those points would still be there and you'd have to delete them. There are more changes to automation and automation items, but they're pretty tricky to explain and to uh, demonstrate. So for now, let's just move on to uh, the effects browser. There's a major change with how Reaper will scan plugins and actually build categories and developer lists for us. So. Instead of only having user folders where we'd use smart folders to uh, categorize our Dynamics plugins or uh, all the plugins from, say, FabFilter or Isotope, Reaper will now attempt to do that for us based on some of the metadata provided by the plugins. And we can access these through the Mixer menu or the Tracks Effects button. If we right click here on this Tracks Effects button, up at the top we have the plugins that are currently instantiated. And then we have categories, and we have the developers, and then we have the effects chains, and then there's all of my um, previously made user folders. So if we go to categories, there's now analysis, delay, distortion, gate. And of course, we can add to these categories as well. And then there's two lists of developers based on the name. So it's going to condense this down a little bit for us to, uh, uh, to make this look better. Now, if you don't have any user-made folders already, this, uh, this list is going to look a lot better for you. So let's open up this, click on Add. So we have the same thing in the list here. And we can, we can click that drop-down button to expand these. We got the full developer list. There are some areas where it doesn't make much sense right now. So IK Multimedia is in two lists just because the that company put their name um, in kind of a weird way 
And so the, the audio units have a different manufacturer metadata from the BST plugins. And there may be plugins that don't even have that. If we want to remove plugins from a particular list, we can right click here and we can remove it from this developer. We can also remove the entire developer by clicking on remove. We can rename this to something else. If we rename this developer to just IK Multimedia instead of IK Multimedia Production, let's see if we can get these VST plugins in this list. And there we go. So I've got another one here Audio Damage, Audio Damage Inc. Rename this one. And if there's duplicates, it will just uh, condense it into both. So we got Audio Damage Inc. and Audio Damage there. For the categories, it's kind of the same thing. One kind of mistake that you might see here is Yuhi is as a category instead of as a, as a developer. Uh, it is also a developer, but it's not a category, so we can just remove that category. And if we want to add plugins to a category, we'll need to go to the VST list, find some plugins. I don't know, let's search for verb. I'll take all these plugins and drag them onto the reverb category. And there they are. Just as an example. So here's sampler. Uh, I know that I have some other samplers like Geist 2. I can drag that onto the sampler category. And now Geist 2 is in there. Um, what would be really nice is if we could right click a plugin here and add to and actually choose from the categories. Right now we can only choose from a user folder. In my folders list, I've got favorites and then uh, different smart folders. If you'll remember smart folders, you basically just search for a particular name. So that one's pretty simple, but maybe uh, some of the other ones like my uh, modulation smart folder are a little more complicated with the actual filter. Uh, so technically now I could take all of these, go to categories, uh, make a new, new category called modulation. And okay, where, where's that? Go here, select all of these, put them into modulation. And now on the track, I've got a category called modulation and those plugins are there. So I could take all of my folders and remove the folders if I wanted to, which will reduce the size of this list here. And I would just go to recently used categories, developers, effects chains, or favorites. This is totally up to you. Uh, this is a new way of working. If you've already got your folder set up exactly how you want, you can just ignore this stuff and you can hide the categories and developers list by clicking on some empty area of the effects browser. Show in effects left pane, you uncheck this categories and developers. So unchecking developers. And now if we go to our quick add list, those options aren't there now. It's just my uh, folders and smart folders. Reaper now supports outputting game reduction data using the Personas game reduction API to, uh, to give access to scripts and possibly themes and other plugins. Uh, so they can use that gain reduction data to give us some feedback inside of the mixer. Right now, there's nothing in Reaper that can show us that information. Uh, but in the future, I'm sure that is coming. And Recomp will output that data, as well as a lot of the Waves plugins and plugins from SoftTube. So what I'm talking about is this gain reduction meter here. So that meter could theoretically uh, be visible from the track panel or be used in some sort of script, things like that. So yeah, so that's a pretty simple one. I wish I could show you more for that, uh, but there isn't anything using that at this time. One last quick thing is track grouping. There is now 64 instead of 32 track groups. You can access track grouping by right-clicking, going to track grouping parameters, and then select a group number. So instead of this list ending at 32, we now have up to 64 groups, which is great for huge projects 
I know that Wilbert Roger was really excited about that. Uh, I guess he ran into that 32 group limit while he was working on the Call of Duty World War II score. So that's what's new in Reaper 5.70. Lots of little things, some really cool stuff with the ruler, the categories and developers list. It's gonna be great for new users, getting that effects browser organized so much quicker. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you missed any other update videos, there's a playlist of all of the what's new in Reaper series. There's so many features that have been added over the past couple years since Reaper 5 came out. It's kind of insane and uh, hard to keep up with all of it. So hopefully my videos will uh, keep you up to date with those things. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. Mm -hmm.